So today we've got the all new AC200L from Blue Eddy. Let's open it up. All right, and here's the unit. But before we take a look at that, let's see what kind of accessories it comes with. Here's our AC charging cable. It has this nice little connector on it. Screws on, and it's a much beefier cable than we're used to seeing. We have our car charging cable. We have our solar charging cable. And we have our DC input cable. So this is used for both the solar charging and the car charging. All right, so let's talk about the specs of this unit real quick. We got a 2,048 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Our AC output is 2,400 watts. On the input side of this thing, we can charge from AC at 1,400 watts. And the PV input is 12 to 145 volts at 15 amps. So you can actually charge with 1,200 watts of solar. All right, so let's take a look at the unit now. We've got our power button. We've got our cigarette lighter jack DC output. And then we've got something new here. This is a 48 volt, 8 amp output. Blue Yeti is supposed to have some accessories that hook into that. And so we don't have them yet. And so we'll have to explore those whenever they come out. All right, so we've got two 100 watt USB power delivery ports, two USB A ports. We've got our 120 volt receptacles, four of those, and they are the 20 amp style. And we got one 30 amp TT30 plug. So this is for your RV. On the left side, we've got our DC slash PV input. We've got our AC input, which uh, is this different style plug. So uh, yeah, it is, a, it is a special cord. You can't just buy one off the shelf to replace it and then we got one expansion battery port we have two handles on the top and i like how it's flat it is quite heavy so it's going to be a kind of a challenge <laughs> if you're trying to move this around a lot let's get a weight on it and we've got a weight of 61.8 pounds let's go ahead and plug our ac charging cord in and start charging this there we go Oh, and the unit came right on. And it uh, looks like we've got 1,200 watts coming in right now. All right, guys. So while this is charging, I'd like to pull up the app. And I already see the AC200L right here. So let's connect to it. We connect it right up with the app. Now it's showing 1.2 kilowatts coming in from the grid. Let's uh, check out the settings here. So our charging mode is standard. Let's see if we can up that to turbo. Now we've got 1,398, about 1,400 watts coming in to charge. Awesome. And we can see 1.4 kilowatts coming in from the grid there. Very nice. All right, guys, so we got this thing almost completely charged up, and it did really charge up very quickly. So now I want to plug in some AC loads and test running AC uh, while we're plugged into the grid in UPS mode. I guess that's what they call it these days. We're going to plug in this heater. There we go. Let's turn on the AC output. There we go. We're doing 737 watts out, 1381 in. So it actually boosted the input wattage back up because it was only doing 800 watts to finish charging the battery, but it went ahead and brought in more power so it can run this AC load. So let's crank this up. There's medium. Now we're doing 1134. Let's go high. There we go. Now we're doing 1419. Let me find some more stuff to run. Let's try the heat gun. And I also just now noticed that the AC input has stopped. And I bet that's because uh, you were limited to how much we can bring in through the AC. I think it's like 14, 1500 watts or something like that. So let's go ahead and just plug the heat gun in anyway. 
Right, let's turn it on. It's making noise. There we go. We're doing almost 2,000 watts. So I'm thinking if you're wanting to run AC output all the time with the AC input in that UPS mode, you seem to be limited to, I don't know, 14, 1500 watts or something like that. Which has to make sense because I mean there's only so much power you can pull over one single 15 amp AC plug. You don't want to overload that. Now so how do we get the AC input to come back? So we're down below 800 watts, we're at 758, so that should be good. Do we have to turn the AC out off? Yeah, there it is. Now we're back. Yeah, I pretty much think you can't really exceed that for very long before it shuts that off. And in the app, there's a lot of different modes you can set on this UPS mode. You can you can set solar as the priority. You can do the standard, which I guess is AC's the priority. Time controlled, customized. There's a lot of settings in there. I'm gonna have to go through this and play around with each one of these. This might end up being a whole separate video because there's there's a lot to it. All right, so let's just go ahead and push this AC output. And I've got the AC input disconnected, so we're running just strictly off the battery inverter. All right, let's turn the heat gun on. Let's turn the heater on high. So we're doing 2,000 watts right now. Let's plug in a fan. So we got two thousand almost I just saw 2200 watts now it's gone down a little bit after it started to fan up 2149 let's charge a battery <laughs> see what this will do doing 30 amps over here uh oh well we went way past we went <laughs> We went to 3,000 watts. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have to scale some things back here. Let's try to restart that. I turned the heat gun off. All right, so now we're doing 2,000. Oh no, my battery's fully charged. Ah, okay, we're gonna have to find something else. All right, so we got a different battery to charge. Hopefully that needs some power in it and let's see we're doing 1477 let's turn the heater back up to high all right 2159 let's turn the heater back to medium let's turn the heat gun on there we go 2350 now, but we still need to push this can we push it 2400 let's go heater high now I think the heat gun's gonna push it over now 2522 so we're well over 2400 watts and it's still running it so yeah <laughs> it can do what it says it can do so let's slower that back down all right, so let's leave it at 2200, and I want to test the output with my oscilloscope. All right, so I got the oscilloscope wired in. We're still pulling 2,200 watts, and there's our pure sine wave under load. Doesn't have the perfect rounded peaks but it definitely is a pure sine wave. All right, so now let's experiment with some solar input. We've got to use the DC input cable and the solar cable. So the solar cable connects into the DC input cable with that XT90 plug. And then we plug that whole setup in to the DC PV input like so. And then we plug in our solar. All 
and very quickly we got up to look at that 449 watts 450 that was fast so that's from these two panels right here um, they're not getting direct sun it's, the sun's low in the sky being we're in December right now but yeah I was excited to see how fast that got up to full power so what I want to do right now is, as this is pulling in 440, 450 watts from solar, I want to shade the solar panels and see if it recovers. All right, so I got one panel partially shaded, and we've gone down to 224 watts. So let me remove that and see how fast it recovers. Oh wow, like instantly. So that's awesome. Yeah, the solar on this thing is working great. And that makes a big difference, believe it or not, because if the tracker is slow, if you've got a day where there's chunky clouds and there's sun in and out, in and out, in and out, you're gonna harvest so much more when your tracker is fast because otherwise you're gonna be having so much time for it to figure out what the maximum power point is again. You're gonna lose so much power in that time frame. Also, if you got this in your RV or a van or something like that and you've got solar panels up on the roof and you're traveling and you've got your solar plugged into this thing while you're traveling, you're going under overpasses, you've got different shadowing scenarios maybe you're running through neighborhoods at some point or cities if you've got a slow mppt tracker you're not going to be harvesting all the power that you would like to be harvesting so it being fast like that it, it makes a huge difference all right so we are back at 100 percent and now we're going to do a capacity test and some of you have expressed interest in me doing a AC capacity test. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it through the kilowatt meter. And uh, let's go ahead and turn the AC output on. We'll make sure the kilowatt meter is reset. There we go. And we are at 0, 0.00 kilowatts. Let's plug in the load. There we go. We got the heater running over here as the load. And we're pulling 755 watts. So we'll just let that continue until we drain it all the way down. All right, so we're down to 4%. Our little battery warning icon is flashing over here. And we're currently at 1.79 kilowatts that we've discharged through the AC. So I'm gonna just let this continue to record. That way we can see exactly where it stops. All right, so there we go. We're at 0%, and we turned off over here. Let's see if we can turn the AC output back on. No, because it's zero, so we have to plug it in. There we go, now the AC's back on. All right, so we got to 1.88 kilowatts. So 1,880 watt hours out of 2,048 watt hours of battery capacity we got 91.79% usable capacity. All right, guys, I think that's gonna wrap up the video. As always, let me know what you think about this unit. Also, Blue Eddy's having some Christmas promotions. You guys might wanna check out their website to see if they have any great deals that would be fitting for you. You might pick one of these guys up. Catch you on the next one.